bursting through the ice of a distant frozen world and ready to eat everything in their path are my Tyranids. Today I'm going to show you in an army showcase my custom Tyranid hive fleet. This was the army that I always wanted to have as a kid. And even when I got back into the hobby, I just didn't have the confidence to do it justice. So when the pandemic hit, I made it my goal to finally build and paint a Tyranid army. So I took my time, I chipped away at it, and today I get to show you what I came up with. How about I start with why Tyranids? I absolutely loved StarCraft as a kid, and because I wasn't all that great with fast paced tactics needed for real time strategies, I felt comfortable with throwing wave and wave of my own bugs at someone. Even basic PC games with monsters and bugs would give me jump scares when I was a kid, and a way of taking the fear out of something for me would be to side with it and hunt down the good guys. Man, I would have been so easy to recruit to a villainous clan. Tyranids in Warhammer, they always look so impressive to me. If Games Workshop wanted to show how amazing a space marine was, well, then they needed the diorama to have a lone marine standing somewhere and surrounded by hundreds of drooling and claw-covered monsters. I tried my hand at painting a couple of them when I was a kid, and they were all trash. They looked so bad, I didn't even consider attempting to paint more. My painting world then was simply thick base paints, so anything other than a power armored space marine was going to look god-awful. So fast forward 20 years, and thanks to the arrival of tiny humans in my world and a more subdued lifestyle, I've returned to the hobby. With my days occupied with work and tending to my own little hormigaunts, I found that after they went to bed, I would score a couple of hours of time to myself. I still love PC gaming, but I also wanted a hobby where I could have something at the end of it, rather than just 60 hours of duck game on my record. I found painting relaxing, and whilst I was concentrating on trying to paint eyeballs, I wasn't thinking about the stress that will come with work. The first day that I really got the hang of my airbrush and created a black to red to orange cool looking colour blend was the same day that I knew I wanted to start my high fleet. I'd already built myself an orc and a death guard army, but these relied mainly on basic brushwork and then a whole lot of weathering products to hide how basic they were underneath. This would be the first army that I wanted to look pretty. The orcs were based on yellow sand and the death guard stood atop red earth. I needed a completely different color scheme to challenge me and keep me interested in a new project. A frozen world meant brighter colors and I could incorporate ice, snow and water. These were going to look so different to my other armies. I enjoy all things 90s, so the color palette of the drink cups was an easy selection. White, blue, pink, and purple together again. I've created a guide on how I paint my high fleet in this video, and it includes a list of paints and products. I also detail a basic step-by-step -step guide to painting some of the more popular high fleets if you're getting started and you're seeking some inspiration. This is probably my favorite Tyranid model. Absolutely terrifying, and during 8th edition, they were rarely seen. So not only did I enjoy painting it, but I enjoyed the looks on people's faces when you would place it on the table during deployment. It looked insane. This was short lived as I would have to read out the unit stats and the curtain dropped on the charade of terror. From one epic beast to the 1996 Toyota Tarago of the fleet, the synaptic soccer mum slides the door open and 10 screaming hungry kids pile out. Such a fun model to paint and I'd certainly consider getting a second one so they could flank either side of the board and burst tiny monsters onto the field. To quote the great man, she looks like a steakhouse but she handles like a bistro. Seven Carnifex models and each of them are magnetized with the full range of weapons, all of them painted up. Being such an iconic Tyranid model, I wanted them to be capable of featuring in any thematic list that I put together. It doesn't matter to me if the points are too high or if they've been nerfed with rules in a particular edition, I just want to have some of these in my list. They look great and your opponent expects to see them. Something I really enjoy is all of the army accessories you get to put together as well. Dice bags, tokens, aura markers, and even dice themselves. Here are my custom dice that I had made to suit my army's high fleet colors. 
These are from Chessex, but most companies have some sort of custom design process. I actually started my army by batch painting 40 jeans dealers. Absolute madness. I have no idea what my thought process was, but this alone almost burnt me out. So like it or not, my very first game was going to be 40 jeans dealers running up the board. It was pretty cool to see. And here's the Broodlord bursting through the ice to guide them into the unsuspecting planet inhabitants. I had to treat myself to one of the Forge World monsters, and I figured the Hero Jewel fit the look to accompany my other big chunky bugs. Very few models in the army are custom or proxy models. When it came to the Lictors though, these were one of the last units I painted as I was secretly holding out for a new release model. Using parts from the Warriors and Venomthrope kits, alongside some more dynamic poses, I think captures the sudden and violent attack of the Lictor. My favourite HQ model to play in game is simply the Swarm Lord. Survival, slingshotting units up the board, and then swinging those arms around like a spider monkey in combat. What isn't to like? Then if you're having a game and you don't want to have to worry about unpacking terrain and setting up a table, you bring out the Hive Tyrant with wings. Because there's no hiding this thing. The wingspan is enormous. I have another set of wings and often find myself semi-jokingly seeing if I could possibly attach it to something like a Demon Prince or perhaps a Chaos Lord. When I play using my Tyranid army, it isn't about winning. I understand the cool experience it can be for an opponent facing them, so I build lists and I play in a style that further captures the nature of the swarmer bugs. Generally I will take as many swarming critters as I can and spread them across the board, with a view of bounding from cover to cover towards the enemy defences. Add in some large charging bugs between those squads, and you can picture from the view of a defending space marine this wave of teeth coming towards them with huge models bursting through ruins. This style of battle lends really well to narrative missions. Having your opponent set up in defense and sending wave of wave of your swarm at them each turn. The end objective can simply be for them to hold out long enough to be airlifted to safety. When you aren't playing to win in these scenarios, they are easy to scale from turn to turn on how many more bugs you want to send their way. I look at the army on my shelves and wonder if there's anything else I would add. I don't have much shooting or artillery, but for the melee style my Tyranids represent, I don't feel like I'm missing out. At the moment, the army perfectly fits two shelves, so unless Games Workshop release some completely new models, I think I'm happy to call them finished. For now. Let me know if you've enjoyed the video. It's been a couple of years in the making and I was so excited to be able to put something together and be able to show you. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you on the next one.